Support for Connecticut East this week comes from the Connecticut Technology Council, presenting the 19th Annual Women in Innovation Awards, Tuesday, October 22nd in Branford, honoring outstanding women in the STEM fields. To learn more and to purchase tickets for the event, visit ct.org forward slash women of innovation. Nutmeg Pharmacy, reminding you to get your flu, COVID and RSV vaccinations now to protect you and your loved ones. Visit us in Higginham, Moodis, Centerbrook, Taffil and New London and at our website at nutmegpharmacy.com. And Media Here and Now, a full-service content creation agency producing video, audio, podcasts, and digital content for social media, online, and broadcast use for all types of businesses, organizations, and nonprofits. Find out more at MediaHereAndNow.com. They're two doctors on a mission to help us clean our hands without water. We talk to two Connecticut entrepreneurs as they launch the first truly waterless soap. Plus, we take a look at other stories making the headlines from around the region. This is Connecticut East This Week. Hello, I'm Brian Scott-Smith. Washing our hands is something we do every day on countless occasions without even thinking about it. We turn on the faucet, use some soap, and the job is done. But imagine you're somewhere there is no soap and water. What then? I sat down with two Connecticut doctors, husband and wife team Russ and Yelda Maidens, to talk about their unique product that's about to hit the market. Yalda, I'm going to turn to you first. Where do you come from? And we'll ask Russ the same question because we like our listeners to find out a little bit more about the people behind products. You're entrepreneurs, you've both got jobs, but tell us a little bit more about your background. I'm originally from Iran. I came back in 2012 to Virginia to do my PhD studies. I moved to California for postdoc and since 2016, I joined University of Rhode Island and as an assistant professor and now I am associate professor of biomedical engineering. And Russ, tell us about your background as well. I'm originally from Latvia. I came to the United States when I was 17 years old. I did all my undergraduate studies in North Carolina, finished dental school in Virginia, where we met with Yalda. And then uh, after a journey to California and back to Rhode Island, we purchased a home, we purchased a practice and established ourselves here. You are in Connecticut. And as you said, you have a, a dental practice, I believe, in Groton. Is that correct? That's correct. So let's talk about the fact that... You You both have full-time jobs, you have a family as well, yet you decided to go down the route of creating a product. Why? The idea goes back to 2020 when I had my first child and obviously it was pandemic. And at that time, people were using hand sanitizers tens of the times a day. And I was kind of germ phobic and like, you know, so just wanted to clean my hand every like maybe 10 minutes. And didn't feel good about it didn't feel good about sanitizer and I felt like every time I could smell it and I I didn't just feel comfortable about giving something with my hand to my child and obviously soap was alternative but it was not convenient all the time so we came to the idea of what if we could bring all in one solution and so we don't have the you know the concern about harsh chemicals for sanitizers and also it's convenient you know, nature friendly. And that was where the idea was originated. Talk to us about the journey, though, because it's a long journey. It was about, what, four years, I believe, for this, you know, from the very beginnings to where you find yourselves now. So, Russ, tell us a little bit more about it. So I think it's important also to add a little bit about our entrepreneurial journey from why we started these ideas and started pursuing it. I think at the same time as the idea was born, I was going for master's degree in business administration because I had a lot of ideas always trying to bring them to life didn't have the know-how to this was the reason why we purchased our own practice rather than went to work for someone I always wanted to have my own business I always wanted to have my own ideas and bring those to life so as soon as we settled down in New England we purchased the practice this was the first step in the entrepreneurial journey the next step was the MBA degree that I pursued at the University of Rhode Island and at the same time as 
I was learning how the ideas come to life, how people take their ideas and how they execute on them, I thought, well, we can try and do it ourselves, right? So the idea for Novata came at the same time as I was doing my studies and I was getting confident in being able to execute it. Both have very intense jobs, which no doubt takes up a lot of your time. You also have a family as well. Why did you want to do this? I mean, I know, Yaldi, you said that, you know, you got fed up using sanitizers and all that sort of stuff. And I totally get that because, yeah, they're, they're not the best of things and they can sting. But this is a big thing to add on to, to professional lives already. So why did you really want to do that? So I guess the a strong motivation of not wanting to, you know, using hand sanitizer and having something comfortable and combination of the his MBA and bringing, it was not the only idea. We had tens of ideas and we all both love kind of entrepreneurship as some aspect of our career journey. And so it was a combination of basically and, both of them. And also if I can add to that, I think as a, any entrepreneur can connect, when you have the ideas, you cannot have them in your head and just sit on it. You have to bring it to life because there is always that itch and that thought that what if, like I said, as an entrepreneur, you cannot sit on the idea and not try to execute it. So we just couldn't. And yeah. Yalda was very supportive in getting on board. And you have to have both people on board. You cannot just do it yourself. You cannot have an idea and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it. You have to get both people on board. Both have to be in the same mindset because like you mentioned, busy lives, careers, family, this journey and it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort on both sides, and everyone sacrifices. So talk to us about the product, because as we said at the top of this, it's a no water soap. It obviously has ingredients. You had to do a lot of research. Yalda, I'm guessing you can talk to, to this, because you know these ingredients are all very eco-friendly. I mean, obviously, that was clearly part of your remit to make sure that it was environmentally and eco-friendly, but it took a while to find these ingredients, didn't it? Right. So when the idea was originated uh, I do have some research background you know obviously I do a lot of research but my husband has bachelor's degree in chemistry so he's actually the chemist guy although he's dentist but he's got very strong you know background in chemistry and we came with the formula almost I would say three years ago after the idea was originated and obviously you know a lot of back and forth and since then I would say for a good good two years two and a half years, we have been trying hard to kind of meet certain criteria. And one of them was all natural and plant-based formulation and biodegradability. So I label myself as a technical co-founder. <laughs> so the research was very strenuous. We you know, started with, with what we could get our hands on. We were sourcing materials from the department stores, from online, Amazon, wherever we could get our hands on. And that's how we came up with the original formula. But the original formula had problems. It was synthetic. And I couldn't get my hands on natural ingredients that I needed for testing. And the reason being simply because... I'm a small startup company, and these big companies that source these ingredients or provide them, they have contracts with cosmetic manufacturers and they sell in bulk. They don't want to bother with small people. And so we hit a wall. We couldn't experiment any further in making the product natural without having some kind of, I guess, big muscle behind, behind us. And we started reaching out to formulators, the formulators who formulate for big companies, for PNG, for L'Oreal, and trying to see who can help us. Right? So we pitched them the product. By that time, we had the prototype ready. We, we knew the concept works. We've been testing it with our friends, and we just needed to solve the problem of the natural and biodegradability. We contacted 100 manufacturers with chemists trying to pitch them ideas, send them samples, have them try it, come back to us whether or not this can be done. And majority of them said this could not even be done, and they didn't want to start it. They didn't want to test it. A handful of them said this could be done. We went back and forth with interviews. We hired five, trying to independently come up with the formula that would solve the problem and only one of them was able to provide the satisfactory final formula that we are launching with now. I have it in my hands. It is a very interesting product. But tell me, why is it different to other waterless soaps on the market? Because there are other what claim to be waterless soaps. Why is yours different and how is it different? Explain that to us. There's a very unique thing about our soap that distinguishes us from everyone else. And the fact that you don't need to use anything to wipe it off. There is a mechanism that's 
baked in into the product that carries away the dirt. So when you use the product, just like soap, it will lift the dirt from your hands. But the mechanism that we have created and that's unique to us is that it will coagulate around the dirt and it will form these particles that will harden and flake off or bead off your hands when you use it. So there is no need for wipe, there is no need for water, and that's the single distinct unique feature. Basically it's all in one and it's novel. There is no such a thing in the world. So this truly is, you're, you're claiming this is truly a unique product it's, at this moment in time, that there is nothing else on the market yes. that, yes, that looks... Yes, strongly I can say that. So what's interesting about this, of course, is its uses. It's got multiple uses. Talk to us about where you feel your market is. Who are you targeting with this? So we have multiple targets, obviously. The first one, two ones, I, I would say the first two are multiple moms and outdoor people. And I think this is mainly because this is the product that originated from our own personal need. The idea came from us traveling with our kids and having to lug a lot of things around, trying to minimize the things we bring and staying true to our values of sustainability, environmental friendliness. So yes, the core target to begin with would be outdoor people, moms with kids, and that's basically what we are. Before we started recording, you put some on and, and showed me how it works. What's interesting about it and, and watching it as it as it beads up, etc., is it, and not that your hands were dirty, but I mean, it does actually lift the dirt. And that's the difference as well, isn't it? Because, you know, when we use hand sanitizers, they're great, but the majority of hand sanitizers do one thing. They kill germs. Yes. They don't generally tend to to lift off dirt and things do they so and, and then of course they, they, there's others like pitfalls as well they dry your hands out and so also if you've got nicks and cuts and things on your hands it can be very sensitive as well this avoids all of that doesn't it that's very important observation and i appreciate that you you are bringing up because this is really what is making us different yes so in a sense the way the soap works it works by lifting the dirt of your hands then you have to have a vehicle that is going to carry that dirt off your hands it's either water or wipe sanitizers don't have that the soaps that are out there on the market and they claim them to be waterless soaps essentially what they are are sanitizers in foam form or gel form or cream form that you still have to go back and rinse out or have some kind of a wipe you know they don't advertise that they <laughs> town people as the waterless soap but there's nothing in it that carries it away my personal experience with sanitizers many many times you know you go to gas station and like you know do a lot of things with your hand and you see clearly dirt in your hand so i do hand sanitizer and i say yeah it kills the bacteria but it's not removed so i don't feel comfortable like eating something or giving something to my child and then if you do eat something you can taste the sanitizer on the on top of food the... <laughs> that you ate you know children you don't necessarily want to be slapping sanitizer over children either i mean they're young they've got you know young skin etc so I'm, I'm guessing this gentler more organic sort of like formula is you know one of the big sellers points here is that it isn't harsh exactly more to your point there is an environment that exists on the surface of your skin that needs to have a delicate balance of good bacteria bad bacteria this is the innate protective factor that we're born with so if you strip your bacteria with the sanitizer which kills 99 percent of the germs it kills all the good ones too so it strips that natural barrier away from you and right now post-covid people are waking up to it, they're becoming more and more aware that the sanitizers are not good. Not only they don't clean your hands, but also cleaning all that good bacteria on your hands is horrible. I Me mean, as a dentist, I have to use sanitizer between the patients. I use it every day. Medical field, the same. It's a very known problem in the medical field. The overuse of sanitizers has a very bad consequence to your skin and natural barrier. Well, it's the same as overuse of antibiotics as well, isn't it? You, exactly. know, you get a resistance against exactly. it sort of thing. So, exactly. um, yeah, it's, it, we're sort of going down that type of field and clearly again you know your product helps to avoid that what sort of reactions have you had so far from people because you know it's still relatively new it's still waiting really to hit the market and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second but what sort of reactions have you had from people who've actually tried it funny anecdote we've actually when we were testing the prototype and see if this idea has legs we went in front of uh, the trails and the bluff point local trails hiking trails in front of dunkin donuts trying to have people sample the product and collect the feedback gather the reactions so most people 
they were hesitant to try it because they don't believe you, right? Of course, they yeah. don't understand how this works. But once they tried, they were blown away. They're like, "How? How does my dirt <laughs> come off my hands?" Like, and they see the they see the process, and they're just getting blown away. And we had a lot of people who were non-believers at the beginning, and then converted to believers afterwards. And people get excited about it. They start suggesting different areas to use it. And this is how some of the target audiences came to us. Like one gentleman was a sailor, and he said, "Well, we can use it on a sailboat." And we never thought that this could be used on a sailboat. But apparently, when you're at sea, fresh water is a precious commodity. So basically, we were kind of collecting surveys from people too to just get some idea about different aspects of our product. And we've got a lot of like good feedback from them that we could actually improve. Do you want to talk time. about uh, that anecdote with your cousin when she tried it on her yeah. hand? Yeah. So one of my family, when I send it to them, they said that yeah, no, this is great. But would you be able to make it actually white? Because I see like it's dark, you know, brown thing coming out of my hand. And then I said, well, that's your that's a dirt on top of your hand. It's the the product itself is white. So what is coming out of your hand is actually the germ on top of your hand. So that's that was a funny thing. Yeah. Looking back over the time that you've spent so far on this and continue to spend, do you think there's anything that you would have done different that you've learned out of this process? We did not know that bringing a product to the market is going to require so much time, but we would not have done it differently. I think this is a great idea. We believe in it wholeheartedly and we have learned a ton on this journey and we're just going to keep building on. Yeah, the only thing I would say I learned personally was like wasting some time with some Sometimes. formulators like a month two months and uh, like not hearing from them like having our hope that they can come up with something so now if i go back again i would outsource to more of people at the same time you know parallel together work it would be a little bit more relentless in time so the important thing of course is there is a website at the moment is that the only place that people you know can purchase this talk to us about how they can get hold of this because obviously you want as many people to know about it and obviously to start using it yeah so at the moment we're launching on our website nowataclean.com we have plans in the future to move to amazon and retail but uh, at this time NovataClean.com is the only place where you'll be able to purchase it. So we would love to see ourselves in Target one day. I think that would be the ultimate goal for us. But also, I mean, again, because it's really a product for so many different things, I mean, I suppose it could it could literally turn up anywhere. I mean, you were talking about hiking and outdoors. I mean, there's plenty of hiking and outdoor shops. I mean, the one that instantly comes to mind to me is Cabela's, which is like a big, this is true. A big chain. There is a challenge with going retail, which is the association that your brand will cause from people depending on which retail location you're going to end up in. So if you end up in a Cabela's, then people will associate this with a hunting and fishing product more so than if you would end up in Whole Foods, right? So you have to be strategic where you want to be. And even if we could go to retail at this point, we have to be careful because we need to understand who our ideal target is, who people who would resonate with the product are best. And this is how we would select the retail location. And what's the sort of price point for this as well? Because these are also very important things because people will buy things, but it's down to price sometimes as well. I mean, this is clearly, as we've explained, or as you've explained, a unique product, but it has to come at a cost that, you know, so what's the sort of price point that you're looking at for this? So the price point will be $14.99 for two and a half ounce bottle. And we price it based on what you can buy that is competitive to the same product on the market already. And also you have to factor in the convenience factor that is obviously going to demand a more premium than something like a regular soap. Again, from what I could see when you did the example before we started recording, you didn't actually use a huge amount. I mean, it looked like it was the size of possibly a dime or something. I mean, it was a relatively exactly. small amount. So, I mean, this isn't... So two ounces probably is going to last quite a while. Exactly. It doesn't take much. Uh, so if you factor in how much you use exactly, so two, two and a half ounces will last you a long time. And also people don't factor in when you are using a wipe or a sanitizer, how much resource you're actually consuming with water 
And so average person uses about a gallon and a half each time they wash their hands. Mm -hmm. It's more than you would use when you're in an outdoor scenario. But when you are in outdoor scenario, the fresh water that you bring is the expensive fresh water that you, <laughs> that you purchase in the store. You well, know? if you're out and about, the fresh water is for you to drink and keep hydrated, isn't it? You don't want to be wasting it, you know, and washing your hands. So. Exactly. Well, this has been fascinating talking to you both. And congratulations. I mean, it sounds Thank like you. it's been a long journey, four years, but you've uh, both stuck it out it looks like a fabulous product it smells actually really nice which is you know that's always good it's not too perfumey either and to have something unique clearly it's that's helpful to the market we wish you both continued success with this and hopefully we'll come back maybe we'll come back in a year or something and see how you're doing but uh, in the meantime yelda and russ maidens thanks ever so much for the interview thank you thank you so much brian and if you want to find out more about Ras and Yelda's waterless soap and how to get hold of it for yourself, then head over to the website at nowaterclean.com. That's N-O-W-A-T-A-C-L-E-A-N.com. Connecticut East This Week is made possible by the Connecticut Technology Council, recognizing STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics as critical to Connecticut's economy, providing jobs, careers, and business opportunities. Help celebrate the leadership of 45 outstanding women in STEM as we honor them at the 19th Annual Women of Innovation Awards event on Tuesday, October 22nd in Branford. Hear winners' inspiring stories and how these dynamic women are leading the way forward. Learn more at ct.gov of forward slash women of innovation. Nutmeg Pharmacy, reminding you it's flu season. Get your flu, COVID and RSV vaccinations now and protect you and your loved ones. We are a full-service, independent pharmacy group, providing prescriptions, over-the-counter medications and more, plus free local delivery from our locations in Higginham, Moodis, Centerbrook, Taffville and New London. Find out more about us and our services at nutmegpharmacy.com. And Media Here and Now is a full-service content creation agency based in Eastern Connecticut and producing video, audio, podcasts and digital content for social media, online and broadcast use for all types of businesses, organizations and non-profits. If you need a new company video or radio advert or want to start your own podcast, then get in touch and see how we can help you at MediaHereAndNow.com. Time now for a look at other stories making the headlines this week. The Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station and the CDC have reported the first human case of Rickettsia parkeri in the state, a disease that has been transmitted by the invasive Gulf Coast tick. The disease is similar to Rocky Mountain spotted fever, another tick-borne illness, and cases have been reported in the southeast of the country. But due to climate change and tick migration, this is the first report of its kind in the northeast. Dr. Gudas Malai heads up the experiment station's tick testing laboratory and says the finding is significant. When we learned about this tick-borne diseases, we immediately contacted the health department and the patient. And as a result, we were able to be in touch with the physician because up to that point, they didn't even know what disease they are dealing with. And they are trying to blame a different tick-borne diseases, which wasn't the case. The importance and significance of proper diagnosis and treatment. Malai says Connecticut already has several tick-borne diseases like Lyme disease and says the need for public awareness and education for tick bite prevention strategies, including the use of insect repellents and performing tick checks following exposure in tick-infested areas, is vital. Even if they don't want to send ticks for testing, they can keep it in case if they develop any symptoms, then they can send it to us or consult with those who have expertise in tick identification so that they can find out what kind of tick it is and what kind of disease they should be looking for. Lai says the Gulf Coast tick is hitching a ride on migratory birds that fly to central and northern states that possess more favourable environmental conditions for their survival, all part of climate change. Malai says so far they have only found Gulf Coast ticks in certain parts of Fairfield County, but can't rule out they are not elsewhere in the state. The world's first nuclear submarine, 
USS Nautilus celebrated its 70th birthday recently. The submarine was commissioned back on September 30th, 1954. Lieutenant Commander Brian Chapman is the officer in charge of Nautilus at the US Navy's Submarine Force Library and Museum in Groton and said the history is not just about the submarine, but the men who crewed her too. The ocean environment is the most inhospitable place in the known universe. The crew of Nautilus took this magnificent ship into those depths with the added complication of a trailblazing nuclear propulsion system that had never before propelled ships at sea. The risk was mitigated by skill and training, the environment overcome by the quality of the ship in which they sailed. The commissioning of this historic warship changed the world forever on this day 70 years ago. Nautilus was the first submarine to sail under the North Pole under the name Operation Sunshine that brought the submarine and her crew from Pearl Harbor in Hawaii to the shores of England in just 19 days. Lonnie Barnum is president of the USS Nautilus Alumni Association and a former crew member himself and said many famous names are associated with Nautilus but the important ones belong to her crew. Yes, there was Admiral Rickover and there were a ton of talented engineers and shipyard workers who designed and built Nautilus. But the men who truly made Nautilus such a success were those who sailed her during her 26 years of operational life. Many of those men are here today. Many more are at home wishing they could be here, but they're too infirm to make the trip. Unfortunately, far too many Nautilus sailors have departed on eternal patrol and are watching the celebration from Neptunes of Alhalla, where old submariners sail on. Nautilus's nuclear capability revolutionized undersea warfighting and more than 200 nuclear-powered U.S. ships and submarines have followed in Nautilus's pioneering wake since. The Chamber of Commerce of Eastern Connecticut, along with local businesses, honored the region's military personnel, currently serving and veteran, at the 13th Annual Military Appreciation Breakfast recently. The breakfast also presented its annual Service Person of the Year Award, which this year went to musician first class Robert Dury of the U.S. Coast Guard. Since 2020, Jury has contributed 300 hours of community service to local schools and their music programs to help inspire the next generation of musicians. The Coast Guard Band has been such an integral part of the culture of New London, counting through our yearly school concerts coming up this next month, and we have our chamber outreach initiatives at local schools and retirement communities, and our musical mentorship program, which is the volume of what this award entails, from going out to schools in this area, especially as we're coming out of the COVID pandemic, getting students excited about music programs, and getting them back to playing instruments and transitioning back to in-person learning. Captain Todd Moore is a former sub-base commander and now chief of staff at the sub-base's Undersea Warfighting Development Center and said support and recognition from the local community means a lot. I'd like to thank you especially for the opportunity to gather a group such as this that values service. Service and values our military. Service is in all of your hearts as made clear by the actions of the Military Affairs Council, the generosity of the business community that supports it, and the sacrifices of our military military members that they make and their families make in this area. Eastern Connecticut is home to the world's largest submarine base in Groton, along with the Coast Guard Academy in New London and various National Guard Army units, as well as the largest veteran population in the state. And around 1,000 middle and high school students from across eastern Connecticut have been finding out about job and career opportunities in manufacturing in Connecticut. The second annual Explore Manufacturing Expo kicked off at Dodd Stadium in Norwich recently, starting a series of six events that will take place across the entire state. Shannon Marimon is the executive director of Ready CT, one of the event's partners and a statewide organization that places teams in schools to deliver work-based learning opportunities. Every student needs to be informed with as much information as possible to make those decisions about what comes next for them when they graduate. And there's so many high growth, high demand opportunities in jobs right now, especially in manufacturing, that they just don't know about. So we need to make sure that we're telling them and giving them as much of that exposure as possible. The Dodd Stadium Expo event had 18 local manufacturers ranging from Electric Boat, who makes submarines in the state, to Matt and Construction, one of the region's largest building contractors. Michael Nigello is the president and CEO CEO of the Eastern Connecticut Workforce Investment Board, or EWIB, that started a manufacturing pipeline initiative back in 2016, helping to promote manufacturing jobs in the region. Placed over 4,000 people into jobs in the last eight years at over 200 manufacturing companies. We've also got our youth MPI that we started in 2018, recognizing that we needed to develop that future workforce pipeline. We're in 12 comprehensive high schools across the region now, and it's a kind of a short 
short-term program to get kids aware of the opportunities, to get them some basic training and let them know kind of what it takes to succeed in manufacturing. The expo showed students the range of opportunities in the manufacturing sector from high-tech to more traditional roles. That's all from us for this edition. Do send us your questions and story ideas to the show via our website at Connecticut-East.com or Facebook or Twitter at Connecticut East and on Instagram at Connecticut East This Week. And you can listen to the show again on our social platforms on demand and by asking your smart speaker to play Connecticut East This Week podcast. And please like, follow and share on your social media too. I'm Brian Scott-Smith. Thank you for listening. (music) 